Uh, my lords, it's, it's a great honour to follow the noble Lord Hannon of Kingsclear. We, my lords, we've heard some painful stories this afternoon. It was very moving to hear uh, the experience of the noble Lord Paddock. But we need to remember that, as the Minister for Women and Equality said in the other place, <clears throat> we can tackle these issues within existing law. Advocates for a bill against conversion therapy cite forced marriage, physical abuse, coercion, threats of physical violence and verbal abuse as some of the practices that need to be prevented. But, my lords, thankfully, there are already laws on our statute book dealing with these things. As has been set, stated numerous times in the House today, the UK has an array of laws already in force that rightly prohibit Genuinely, genuinely reprehensible behaviour of the kind sometimes identified by advocates of new legislation. We don't need this bill, bill to deal with those things. We simply need to enforce the existing law. The question we therefore need to ask is what else is it that this bill is seeking to address? My great concern is what may be regarded as conversion therapy by advocates of the bill is not abuse with the expression of certain opinions. Definition has been cited already as a major concern. The Church of England paper, which we referred to earlier, states that there is no clear or fully agreed definition. The banned conversion therapy campaign includes controversial groups like mermaids and Stonewall. In one of its briefings, it calls for private prayer and casual conversations to be brought within the scope of the bill. Could private prayer and casual conversations fall within the present bill? I fear they could. So we could see innocent people criminalised for everyday conversations. Not for brutalising people, not for some violent programme of brainwashing, but simply for talking with other people. We must not allow this to become a new speech crime where those deemed to hold wrong opinions are prosecuted for mere words. It would be a disaster for free speech and religious freedom. The noble Baroness Lady Burt of Solihull was recently appointed a patron of Humanists UK. I wonder whether she agrees with their response to the government consultation on banning conversion therapy, which says that a bill must cover verbal communication such as confessions and repentances. Central, as it's been stated, central to the Christian faith is the call for people, all people, to turn to Christ for the forgiveness of their sins. This necessarily involves confession and repentance. As the noble Baroness Foster has firmly stated, these are ongoing and necessary aspects of living the Christian life for millions of people in this country. Article 9 of the European Convention on Human Rights protects freedom of religion and belief. We know that. Not just the freedom to believe things in your head, but the freedom to explain your beliefs to others and to invite them to embrace them. It protects the freedom to change your religious beliefs, and thousands do every year. The freedom to repent. In fact, it protects what Christians call conversion, which is central to the Christian experience. On that note, I'm rather disturbed to see that word conversion used in the title of the bill in such a negative, a negative sense. The experience of Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus was an amazing positive experience and has been for millions since. Like the noble Baroness Fox, I'm an enthusiast for conversion. My lords, I plan to reference what has been in place in Victoria uh, in Australia, but Noble Lord Farmer has very powerfully explained the risks of going down that route, as has the Noble Baroness Mayor. A law like that would be wholly intolerant of Christians who hold orthodox convictions. Such beliefs may no longer be fashionable, but should it really be illegal to invoke them in your prayers? My Lords, I want to just return to what I said at the very beginning. Um, the UK already has comprehensive laws against abuse and coercion. Victims should be helped to pursue justice within the current legal framework. 
New legislation in this area is not only unnecessary, but has been said a number of times, dangerous, since it threatens to criminalise harmless behaviour. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.